Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by hearing the word. It's specifically talked about in that setting right there in Romans chapter 10 about the preached word of God. As I'm preaching the word to you right now, faith is developing. Faith is coming. Faith comes by hearing the word. So the word brings faith. That's why Jesus said the sower sows the word. If we want people to live a faith life or a life that's, that's not ruled by fear, not ruled by discouragement, but a life that is run and ruled and dominated by faith, by believing, and this is not presumption. I'm not talking about trying to get God to do something. That's not faith. That's a con artist, okay? You're not, we're not tricking God into anything. We're believing who he already is. We hear the word. We hear his very... Um, the, 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 very, the very makeup of who he is at his core, and we believe that. We say, thank God that there's somebody better than me that came and took my place. He came from the Father. The Father gave because he loved me so much, and I hear the gospel, and I believe it. So faith comes by hearing the word. So the word does that, okay? James chapter 1, verse 21 says that when we receive the engrafted word, James 1, 21, I, I'll turn there. James 1, 21, so I can have it in front of my face too. Hallelujah. James 1, 21 says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now, if you understand what I just said a few minutes ago, you understand it's not talking about your salvation. You don't read the Bible to get into heaven. You have to hear the gospel. You can read the Bible for that faith to come. But the heavenly life, being born from above, is dependent on believing on Jesus. So you believe on Jesus, that's wonderful. But now here, you're stuck in this world. And your five senses are telling you every day how rotten your life is how your job is not the one that you really thought that you were gonna have. It's not your dream job, but it's, it's a job. And, and so you're discouraged about that. And, and my kids are out there, you know, three of my four kids are, are doing well, but man, that one is just whatever. Or, or this over here, my, I got a health situation and the doctor's telling me this, whatever. There are all kinds of things in your tangible world that are screaming at you. They're screaming at you, trying to get you in your soulish realm, remember your soul is what you want, your desires, what you think, your thoughts, your mind, and, and how you feel. Trying to get your soulish person over into feeling sorry for yourself, thinking that you're a terrible person that's no good, and desiring horrible things up to and including taking your own life. There are all kinds of things. There's a whole gamut here of, of, of things that can negatively come on you in your soulish realm. That's why James says the word of God, when you receive with meekness the engrafted word, the word is able to save your souls. The word will completely radically save. In fact, I put in my notes here, I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your soul, when you receive the, the engrafted word, your soul, your mind, will, and emotions is saved or rescued from the world's grasp. I'm gonna say that again. The word helps your mind, will, and emotions to be saved or rescued from the world's grasp. The world wants to get a hold of you. The world wants you to think, oh my goodness, um, you know, th these people are doing this and, and it's not right to live this way. You gotta live like the world. And so the world will say you're wrong, but they're not right. So here you are in this world, you're in it, but you're not of it. You're born from above. And it's like that you're, you're a stranger in this world because heaven is your home, yet you're called to live a reality, a heavenly reality, a spiritual reality in a rotten world. And I'm telling you what, in so many ways, this world is rotten, but I'm not a doom and gloom preacher. I'm not just saying that just to say the world's terrible, not all of it, because you're in it. I'm in it. The glory of God is here present to change your world. Hallelujah. That's the whole point of what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much for watching this Faith Bite today. We hope you really enjoyed it. And if you did, please share it with a friend and do us a favor. Click on subscribe right here on your screen. And if you liked this message and you want to see the whole thing, 
click on the link above it and you'll be able to see the full message. Hey, remember Jesus is Lord and you are complete in him.